Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Jed, and it's finally time that I return. You see, six years ago, I released a video titled Fortnite is Finally Dying. The video went viral, surpassing six million views, which in turn placed me on the map and allowed me to pursue YouTube as a primary source of income. After about a year of doing just that, the Jed brand started to fade, started to disappear off of the platform. Eventually it faded into nothingness complete radio silence from this channel. As the years have passed, I made the occasional flirtation with my former pastime, but nothing that manifested into long-term, consistent production of content. I have decided that it is finally time for me to reintroduce myself to the platform. And what better time to do that than the upcoming anniversary of the single piece of content that rallied an audience in front of me to begin with. There will come a day where I will answer for what exactly was going on during this period of silence, and precisely why I'm here now but that day is not today. Today we are here to reanalyze the 2018 claim that Fortnite was beginning to die off. Was I wrong? How is the game doing in 2024? Are their numbers doing better or worse? And I'm even going to go a little bit deeper and talk about the state of the game now versus 2018. So I'm sure the largest claim that everyone wants to see addressed is was the original claim accurate? Did Fortnite, as of June 2018, begin its downfall? Well, the answer is... Yes and no. Yes, because the game has trended downwards in popularity after that video, never to consistently reach those numbers ever again. But the reason I also say no is because I have to consider where it's ended up after the fact. After Fortnite, one of the most popular games to ever exist, endured a multiple year decline in player retention, concurrent player counts, dwindling interest, the game wound up being still one of the most popular games to ever exist. So here we are over on Fortnite GG, and the reason I am using this website is to justify to you, the player, that Google Trends is an accurate source to gather information on concurrent player counts. So unfortunately, this doesn't go very far back in time. It only goes, the earliest entry is April 2nd, 2023. And I'm not exactly sure how they conduct the measurement of player counts. I don't know if Fortnite has an API that developers can tap into and actually see live player counts but my suspicion is that they use the live player counts provided by epic in game now since that's a somewhat new feature to uh come up with a total and they keep track of it they measure it over time and this is the shape of the graph so april 2nd we got this many people playing kind of maintains that way for a really long time almost the entire year and then Right about the end of October of last year, the game received a spike, and it got quite popular. There, there It peaks kind of around December, so let's just try and remember that. Late October, it jumps up quite a bit. It peaks around December, and then it kind of gradually jumps back down to where it was over time. So kind of remember that. And then here we go, we're jumping over to Google Trends, and I have already set up the exact filter, so April 2nd to current day. So here we are, April 2nd, it uh, maintains pretty low here, under the 25% mark for quite a while. And, um, and then something happens here at the end of October, the game kind of starts to jump up, and uh, it continues to grow, continues to be a pretty decent, pretty decent player retention here. And then, uh, wow, look at that, the beginning of December, it peaks. And then, after it peaks, kind of dies down a little bit, and now we are in very similar territory to where we are now. So I did a very similar thing in 2019 when I did my one-year anniversary of Fortnite is Finally Dying. I took a look at PUBG's concurrent player counts because we actually had access to PUBG's player counts. I cross-referenced them to Google Trends, and we found that the graph is almost identical. And the reason I use PUBG is because it was a very similar game. It was a popular battle royale at the, at the time, just like Fortnite was. So I learned that Google Trends is actually an incredibly accurate tool to find player counts. And the reason I'm looking at Fortnite GG is because I want to prove to you, the viewer, that Google Trends tends to follow almost identically the trajectory of the player counts. In Fortnite and the reason I can't just use this is because it only goes back to 2023 and we're talking about the state of the game back in 2018 so I'm going to need to use something else to measure the state of the game so we're jumping over to June 1st 2017 this is about the beginning of Fortnite um, so we're gonna punch this in and see what the graph looks like so this is the entirety of Fortnite here 
This is all the way back in 2017 when the game just started to come out, just started to get, get some popularity here. So now that I believe I've justified the use of Google Trends as an accurate source of concurrent player counts, I'd like to take a look at June 2018. This right here where my mouse is located, right here on the screen, this is the month that Fortnite is Finally Dying came out. The game was at peak popularity, just, a, just about. It was extremely popular at this point in time. And what happened afterwards was the game began a very slow, very slow over time decrease down to very low numbers. And then we, we, we saw a pretty decent peak back here in December 2023. We've already seen that. This peak in December was certainly not the numbers that we used to have nor was it a long-term consistent boost in player base. This seemed to be a brief sort of, I'm not familiar with Fortnite events or anything like that. I need to relearn the game and, and the history of it. But from the looks of it, it looks like there was a pretty popular event that came out, maybe some sort of sponsorship or partnership that Epic had done. But it peaked for a little bit, and then it jumped back down to its normal numbers, which are substantially lower than when Fortnite is Finally Dying originally came out. It is about... 60% lower. So that is a pretty substantial jump. So of, of course I have to say, yes, the game objectively died down. And you can argue that it all games do this, and you know what, that's probably true. But that's what I was asserting in my original video, that the game was incredibly popular, and it is starting to die. And that's exactly what we see here. It started to die. So for those wondering where I get my information, where I conclude that the game is dying, and I, and I substantiate that, this is how I do it. And this is how I've chose to do it this time around. Because now, thankfully, us Fortnite players, we have access to real live player counts. And we didn't used to have that back in the day. So people would always be skeptical of my Google Trends source. You know, people don't play Fortnite on Google. They they play Fortnite on the Epic Games Launcher. So now I, I think it, it's reasonable to say that while Google Trends might not be a perfect one-to-one -one ratio of how the game's actually doing, it's pretty damn close. It, it holds the same shape generally. So that's that. Let's get back to the video. The game is still incredibly and inconceivably popular. It is among the top dogs in the gaming industry. That is just how large of a lead they had back in 2018. They were able to lose most of their momentum and still wind up being one of the most popular games on the market currently. It would be just like if Amazon had experienced a significant decrease in sales, revenue, workforce. It would be correct to say they are objectively declining. But declining to where? They would still be one of the most substantial e-commerce businesses in the history of ever. That kind of sums up my views on the topic. Yes, the game fell. It is measurable and real. But the connotations of that statement suggest that it's in a much worse spot than it actually is. And I think that's the primary contention driving a majority of the criticism I still receive today in 2024 on that six-year-old project. I will concede, however, at the time, I believe the game was about to endure a much more dramatic falloff and maintain much lower numbers in the long term than had actually occurred. I never went on record and definitively gave a prediction on by how much or how little the game would fall, but you'll just have to take my word for it. The game did better than I thought. I echoed the same sentiment in 2019 when I did a one-year revisit to the same topic. I certainly don't regret this statement. It is an objectively true statement. However, I was humbled by the popularity of the game in the following years. I didn't expect it to maintain the popularity that it has now. So how is the game now, after all this time? Concurrent players don't really tell the full story, so diving deeper into the state of the game is what I want to do for this next section. I want to take a look at the mechanical side of Fortnite. The primary issue I always hounded Epic for was Bloom, an RNG-based combat. The shooting model back then overwhelmingly consisted of lining up a cone of fire with your opponent and hoping that more shots connected to them than to you. It was completely random, unlearnable, untrainable. It was a detrimental mechanic that artificially held back higher tier players and equalized them to lower tier players. It didn't matter if you had excellent aim, it was heavily mitigated by an unnecessary and unavoidable element of randomness, and that mostly fueled my disdain for the product. It contributed to my feeling of never improving at the game. I really believe that the most important tool that you had at your disposal, a weapon, the thing you cannot win without, wasn't controlled by you. So how has it changed since then? Well, 
Epic seems to be fed up with that idea too, because for the past few years they've been pushing a lot of 100% accurate weapons. And on top of that, some of their Bloom-based weapons that they've been implementing are substantially more accurate. They still do utilize Hitscan and Bloom, but the Cone of Fire has been substantially reduced, allowing you to be more accurate than before. I also could be mistaken, but I believe within the last few months, they've been experimenting with moving away from hitscan weapons, which if that is the case, I wish I had a time machine to tell my past self that they would do this in the future. I have videos from 2017 asserting that this should have been a core gameplay mechanic from the beginning, and it's incredible to me that so many of my suggestions are in the game now. I don't believe I played a part in it, but it's crazy to think that nearly everything I had wished for back in the day is just part of the game now. Perhaps that could be another pretty good video idea. The pacing of the game has been substantially improved. I come from a time where this was the fastest you could get around. From fight to fight, from landmark to landmark, you moved at this speed and there was nothing you could do to get around it. I could talk about this topic for 15 minutes straight. There are so many items and mechanics they've added since I was playing this game that have just sped up the pacing of the game and allowed you to get around faster. So that's probably going to wind up being a separate video, comparing the pacing and movement mechanics from now to then, my suggestions back then and how they compare to what we play now. It is incredible to me how much the game has improved in this aspect and so many more. Getting back to the game's popularity, I think something worth mentioning is the constant barrage of sponsorships and partnerships Epic has been shoveling towards their consumers, from basically everything Marvel related to Destiny 2, which is a game I have way too much time in. This is something that keeps certain players interested when they otherwise wouldn't be. The best they had six years ago was obscure references to other pieces of media that potentially flew over the heads of most of their consumers. They've definitely made improvements here, and I'm sure stuff like this is a revenue generating machine for Epic that gives them the financial freedom to produce and support excellent game modes such as this. I couldn't do a video without talking about something that still to this day has me intimately involved in the game, creative mode. For those that don't know, and that's most of you, I am building a fully fledged, story driven, roguelike game within Creative 2.0. This isn't just a little game mode, this is an entire game I am building within Fortnite Creative. And I'm building this game with a heavy emphasis on replayability through a progressive but random loot system. Every single one of the hundreds of weapons in Fortnite Creative have been delicately and precisely placed into appropriate loot pools to keep runs fresh. I've even given players the ability to farm for extremely rare but permanent drops that will stay with you across runs until you decide to part with it. I have multiple entirely custom and animated boss fights with complex and difficult mechanics required to bring them down. Multiple side paths, easter eggs, even some hidden battles have been tucked away awaiting the exploring type to stumble into. All with unique account-based accolades and items to reward the effort. I understand this is pretty off topic, but I cannot overstate how intensely passionate I am about Fortnite Creative. And that kind of segues into my next point. Fortnite isn't even a battle royale anymore. It has become so much more than that. It is a social space. It is a content hosting platform. It is a vessel for the kind of standards that an overwhelming majority of industry developers can only exist within the shadows of. It has fundamentally changed my views on the pricing of video games across the board. I simply won't pay $60 or $70 on a video game anymore, knowing that a game with no price tag can easily offer as much if not more. I'm a strong advocate for the reduction of video game pricing across the board, and the number one example I use to justify that statement is Fortnite. But what do you guys think? Am I overselling it? Am I underselling it? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I appreciate everyone who's been around this long, and I hope you have enjoyed my return to the platform. For those just now finding me, I used to do this kind of content many years ago, and it was pretty much exactly the same as this video. Also, for those that don't know, I took such a long break from YouTube that I am no longer in the YouTube Partner Program. They gave old Jed the boot for not uploading consistently enough, so I don't even have the option to monetize this kind of content. So if you guys wish to support me, feel free to enter my code, JedYT, into the Fortnite item shop. You'll find that right down in the bottom right corner, and anytime you buy something from the store, Epic Games will slide a little bit of cash my way. 
because I am partnered with them. So that's probably the best thing you can do if you actually wish to support this kind of content. I totally get it if you don't want to. You would be perfectly justified in uh, refusing to support someone who doesn't upload for many years at a time. But that's neither here nor there. I still hope you appreciated the video. I appreciate everyone for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out, everybody.